So this is my kangaroo with mountain pepper and wild green salsa verde and rosella flowers with some salt bush and some pepperberry. Indigenous ingredients are our ingredients and Aboriginal people, we need to take ownership of these ingredients. We need to showcase these ingredients ourselves because they are ours. They are our story. That We've been living off them for thousands of years and we can showcase it. Sam May is a chef who's been growing a creative passion in Melbourne's busy dining scene. He's drawing on his cultural knowledge to create distinctive dishes that feature a range of Australian native plants and ingredients. So what are we making today? I'll be doing a kangaroo dish uh, cooked in a pan with sweet potato mm. puree. Yep. Uh, we've got some warrigal greens and some pepper leaf salsa verde. When you say salsa verde, that means green, yeah? Yeah, just a green sauce. <laughs> Not too much to it. Yeah. Just blitz it up with a bit of oil. But I just like the flavour notes that I get from the uh, pepper leaf. You get your little bit of sweetness, but mainly your heat. To digest warrigal greens and things like salt bush, you need to cook it. Yeah, it's got... It's like rhubarb or it yeah. needs to be cooked, yeah? Yeah, it needs to be cooked. So in this, I've just got oil. Mm -hmm. Warrigal greens are going to go into that. And my pepper leaf. Ah, oh, pepper leaf straight in the oil? Yep, straight in. I'm going to blitz it up. So I do the uh, sweet potato and the skin. Because part of this element, I want it to cook within itself, but I want it to like get burnt on the outside and I want that smokiness. One of my favourite things to do is peel uh, potato this way. All right, in with that, I'm going to go with some coconut cream. Oh, that's going to be so rich. So I'm going to go a bit more fat. You're kidding. Butter. No. I mean, we're eating kangaroos, so you're allowed to do what you want. Always season everything. I mean, you can cook without salt and pepper and do it at the end. Yeah. But you really want to bring out those flavours while you're cooking it. There's so many great, healthy native plants in here. Yeah, especially in this section here. Yeah, you got Warrigal Greens on the ground here, which I'll be using today in my demo. Yep. Going to do something funky with that. Also, we have the Bloodline, which has been bred out of the finger lime species. So this is your more consistent lime species because it's been bred by the CSIO. So they're hybridising them to kind of get bigger fruit, different exactly. colours. Yeah, and then also with the same colour, this is the Bloodline, so it's going to be orange. You're going to have that colour every time you cut into that. Whereas if you go with the uh, finger limes over here, you don't know what colour you're going to get out of this. Yeah. You know, there's some really cool colours, pink and that, but most times you're going to get green, you're going to get yellow, or sometimes you'll get red. And as a gardener, like, you grow things from seed, you like that variability, but I guess yeah. as a chef, you need no. consistency. Exactly, and especially for a customer's eyes, they want to see the same thing. You know, as soon as they see a variant of something, it's going to look wrong. So... Oh, the expectations. That's where these guys come in. Over here, we've got some strawberry gum. Oh, I've never tried this. Oh, you're going to love this. All right. It's more strawberry than strawberry. That's a big statement. Oh, it's a huge statement. But if you smell it, break it open. Oh, yeah, it's really sweet. Yeah, really it's... sweet. And how do you use this? I'll dry it out, blitz it up. Yep. And then, you know, I've got the powder form. I can flavour ice creams, I can flavour cream. You know, do something, flavour cakes, whatever you want to flavour. This is mountain pepper. Yep. You know, it grows around Tasmania, it grows around the mountain regions of Victoria, you know, from Yarra Ranges, Mount Macedon, I found some earlier. So we'll be using this guy, this is really cool. It's a really beautiful garden plant, this one too. It's, you know, handsome, evergreen, Yeah. really pretty tough. I love the red stem of this as well. Yes. Easy to pick out. Yeah, it is so powerful. Yeah, so I'll be using these leaves. You know, you can dry them out, blitz them up, and there's your pepper replacement. That's the other thing, isn't it? Who's growing these ingredients and, exactly. and how do you get them? Exactly, you can get them online. You know, most suppliers will send them out dry to you as a preferred method because you'll get to you and you get the same ingredient that I would use in my cooking. Mind you, you couldn't have a crack at growing them too. Yes, definitely, and they're not a bad plant to have in your garden. All right, what's next? Well, that's happening. I'm going to throw off some salt bush. Oh. Just for a garnish. A good way to know when things are ready to stop throwing is you have a listen and once the bubbles stop, you know there's no more moisture left in the food. So you can multitask, you can do that, and you know your salt bush is fried. I have heard that, that chefs can hear when, like, for example, a piece of meat is... Cooked. Yeah, it'll start spitting. Yeah. Start spitting at you. So tell me about the kangaroo. I don't eat a lot of meat, and I'm really interested. Like, what part is this? Well, this is the loin. And what makes it such a good meat? Uh, it's really lean. It's not a lot of fat content. Yep. Uh, super rich in iron, proteins and that. Now, one of the worst things I think you could do when you're cooking kangaroo is to treat it like a steak where you aim for rare, medium, rare, yep. cook it on one side, flip it over. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on. I'm going to count to 10 seconds. Every time I count to 10 seconds, I'm going to turn it over quickly. And I season it with a bit of pepperberry. I love how liberally you're using that. Like, yes, it's hot, but it's delicious, so... Yeah, it's going to cook put out. It. I mean, if yeah. you eat it raw, it's got a lot more heat to it. If you cook it out a little bit, the sweetness will come out. A nice knob of butter in. I'm just going to lay my meat in. I'm going to sit it right on that butter. Do we start counting? Uh, I'm already counting now. I'm about to five. Where are you at? Ten. So the reason why I'm doing this is I'm sealing the outside. Because there's no fat content and all that, the juices are going to leak out straight away. So the more I seal it and let it cook, the more stagnant the juices are going to be in this meat, and they're going to stay in the meat. All right, that's how I want it. So I'm just going to put that to the side and let it rest. So I'm just going to do my Warrigal Green oh. Pepper Leaf Salsa Verde. So they've cooled a little bit? Yep, cooled a little bit. So they're not going to, like, cook any more in the oil, make anything else bitter. It's going to taste as fresh as I can get it. So there's garlic, oil, Warrigal Greens, Pepper Leaf. Yep. That looks good. Yeah. OK. Does that look green? Yeah. All oh, right, good. It looks very Verde. We win. So everything just comes together really nicely. You got your sweet potato, your cream, your butter. It's all sort of melted together. See how oozy that is? All right. I'm just going to do some broccolini right on the flame. Again, oil, salt, pepperberry. Oil, salt, pepperberry. I imagine chefing is like gardening. You learn little things off lots of people. Oh, definitely. And, you know, whatever you learn, you can just add to yourself and you can just put your own little spin on it. So that's done. We're ready to plate. So I've got my kangaroo right here, nice and juicy. And see the grains? Mm -hmm. So I want to cut all against the grains so it's nice and easy to chew. My sweet potato. Mm -hmm. Spoonful here. I'm going to do my salsa verde. Just going to drizzle it along the side. Just going to grab a rosella flour. I'm going to sit that right on my sweet potato. Got some chopped macadamia nuts. Just going to sprinkle over the top. Got to eat your trees. That's it. A little bit of pepperberry just around the side of the plate. And I'm just going to grab some salt bush. I'm just going to peel off the leaves and I put that around the plate. So this is my kangaroo with mountain pepper and wild green salsa verde and rosella flowers with some salt bush and some pepperberry. Can we tuck in? Yeah, of course you can. For Sam, the importance of using native ingredients runs a lot deeper than simply creating delicious food. When I cook for people, I want to tell them who I am as a person. Until I cook you something, you're not going to know my heart and it, my heart goes into my food. So as soon as you, you eat that, you're going to feel, you're going to know who I am.